welcome to the photo chats. And uh, we took a week off last week uh, while I was away, and uh, we were in the middle of a lot of vacations. And we're back now, and uh, we're filling the schedule for the next, I should, I should say, the rest of the year. We have enough people we're talking to that I think we'll fill the rest of the year out within the next week or so, and we'll make notifications on uh, Photo PXL. So make sure you're signed up on Photo PXL. It costs nothing to do it, but once you're signed up, you're on the mailing list and you'll be notified of when uh, uh, we make announcements for not only the uh, new speakers, but the videos, these are recorded. So if you have to leave for any reason or somebody misses this, they can uh, watch the recording later on. And the recordings seem to be very, very popular based upon the view numbers that we're getting. Anyway, it's good to be back. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the fall. Uh, I just got over COVID, which Yay! And I really feel good right now. I got more energy today than I think I've had in, in a long time. And um, I've got uh, so many cool things I'm working on uh, down at the Arts Center. Uh, we're working on things. I'm working on the article. I just, if any of you are passing through Indianapolis Airport, I have an exhibit up at the Indianapolis Airport on Antarctica photography. Uh, Michael Durr and I uh, have that. So it's right in the main hall and it's up through the end of November. So. Uh, Take a trip to uh, Indianapolis Airport and just kind of go look at it and then get back on a plane and go somewhere. So <laughs> you can always do that. Anyway, um, so, so many fun, fun things happening and uh, life is good. So today we're very, very happy to uh, have with us Elizabeth San Juan and she's coming us from us. <laughs> oh boy, maybe uh, COVID made me not talk properly. <laughs> but she's coming to us today from uh, Lithuania where She's checking off her uh, country bucket list. And um, I'm gonna let John kind of do the introductions because John knows her a little bit better, but you please be sure to look her up on her website as well as the uh, International uh, Hall of Photography. Um, and John, why don't you take it away, start the introduction and we'll get into this. What I'm going to do before we do that though, if it's all right with everybody, is I'm going to mute everybody and then the speaker and everybody must unmute themselves. So I'm going to mute you now. Elizabeth, John, you guys will just have to unmute yourself so you can speak. And, uh, and if you have questions, use the chat. Uh, we'll be monitoring the chat. And then at the end, you know, people can unmute themselves and ask a lot of questions that they want. And we'll go from there. Any questions before I unmute you? Okay, everybody, you're now muted all. Okay. Okay. I don't know where to start. Um, my usual question whenever Elizabeth joined our old conversations was, where are you today? Uh, <laughs> she seems to be traveling all the time. So we're going to start right there. Where are you today? I'm in Kaunas, Lithuania. And, and I'll be is... heading back to uh, Latvia and then Estonia and then back to Scotland. And where is home base? Uh, Delray Beach, Florida. Also Colorado. <laughs> Now you know why I have to ask every time. <laughs> so, and you're also part of the International um, Photography Hall of Fame. Um, so where would you like to start today? Talking about your work or about the Hall of Fame? Um, it's up to you. Let's, I think, let's do a brief overview of my work and then we could just okay. slide in on how I got into the Hall of Fame. How's that? Great. I'm going to share your, your website here. So, so let me find my mouse cursor here. Can you see that now? Yes. Galleries and current, they look so similar. <laughs> it looks like your photography is all over the place too. So it is. Jump, let's jump into the galleries. You've done a lot of travel photography. I have. Uh, where's your favorite place to travel so far? That's that's hard. That's like picking a favorite child. That's why I only had one. I really couldn't say. I think every every place that I have been to has a special um, enchantment. Let's say I well, I try to spend a lot of time when I travel. I try to do at least three weeks. Uh, usually if try to immerse myself into the culture and and get a good feel for the lay of the land so to speak but and your heritage is cuban correct i yes i am first generation american 
I'm going to start with the cue because that the photo looks familiar. Is that home across the street from the boxing gym? It sure is. Thought it looked familiar. I've been there. Yes. And that trip, I went with Arthur uh, Meyerson. And let me just go back to 2010. Um, and that's when I've been photographing all my life. I used to work for the airlines and I had the ability to travel. I worked at, out of Miami International Airport. Um, and I started when I was 19 years old working for American and worked for them for almost 23 years. So that's why the love of travel. Um, in 2010, my husband would do this thing where he would go play cowboy every uh, year. His great grandfather, grandfather started an organization where a group of men, 150 of them would ride horses for a week. My husband's family are pioneers from Colorado. So my husband was off doing that. My daughter went off to ski camp and uh, she was in Fiji or somewhere. And I was determined not to stay home. So mm -hmm. I Googled, um, you know, for me to do something creative. And I went on Santa Fe Workshop's website and I found Arthur's um, course. And he was my first one, my first experience. And I'm so happy that, uh, you know, that Arthur was my first workshop experience. I was primarily self-taught with film and just really did travel photography. And then, um, you know, Arthur was going around the room asking people what they wanted, you know, why they were there and that. And I was just like, hey man, I wanna have fun, that's it. And um, we hit it off um, from that day on. And luckily for me, I could still call him a very dear friend. Um, and there was a photographer that I am still great friends with. Her name's Annette LeMay Burke. And, um, you know, You're she and I good. just, sorry, yes. Yeah, and right. she and I just um, pounded the pavement and, you know, would stop people in the streets and photograph. And we just had an amazing time. And luckily, again, fast forward, we're still good friends. So. I think the journey has been for me, um, uh, you know, serendipitous where I have come across these people that have really touched me in so many different ways. You know, I could fast forward and then I met Karen in Whidbey Island. And at the time I had a gallery and I, she was presenting her work, work um, of loss and beauty. And I fell in love with that work and I just needed to show that work at at my gallery, um, which I no longer have. Um, and she influenced me in a great way also. And it's, and I must say that the universe has gifted me with meeting these people that are just um, incredibly talented, generous with their talent and their time and their friendship. And, uh, you know, that was 2010, fast forward, and, and here I am now. Um, and I will just give you a little sneak peek. I was excited to receive uh, an email about three weeks ago that um, from Daylight Books, and and uh, hopefully we will have a book on my Japan work in August 2025. So is that the Hokkaido here? Or is there more to it? That's right. That's Hokkaido. It's beautiful black and whites here. So you're doing this 100 by 60. How many of the countries have you hit in this so far? Uh, 103. 103, so you've passed it. I did. I, this this trip, I passed um, my 100. I wanted to make sure. Uh, earlier this year, I, I was in Spain for about two months and um, went to Andorra because I couldn't remember if I had been there or not. So I just wanted to check that off again. And so... Um, this puts me at 103, 104. Well, I think I've been to four. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been to Japan. I've been to Canada. <laughs> I've been to Scotland, Mexico. <laughs> hey, and you're going to Ecuador soon. So yeah, you'll have so five. Getting, getting, this, getting a late start. But I'm already 66, so I missed it all. Uh, let's see. So do you, it looks like you have a mix of black and white and color. Do you have a preference for either one? 
Well, I will have to say that I, I do love color. Um, you know, I think, again, having, I don't know, there's, it's hard to say, right? I mean, I love Japan because of, even though there's a lot of, uh, that may seem black and white, but they are color in J my Japan right. work. So, right, but I am drawn to certain colors. Um, so it's, I would say primarily colors, but mm -hmm. uh, depending, I guess, on my mood too, on how I wake up and, and what kind yeah. of, what I'm feeling that day is really what I'm drawn to. Very cool, very cool. Uh, let's see, so let's go over to the International Hall of Fame for a few minutes here. Yes. Uh, so let's tell people about that. You've recently joined the board there? I did, I joined the board end of October last year. So it'll be a year by the time the induction ceremony, which is November 1st, comes about. And a friend of mine uh, that lives in Colorado told me about the Hall of Fame and said that they were looking for board members. And I went on the website and I saw that they were all men. And I was like, mm, okay, something's got to change. So um, I had a conversation with the chair and the co-chair and uh, just became a board member. And then quickly after that, became the chair of the induction committee, which I am very excited about the inductees this year. Um, you can scroll onto that page and see. Um, and we'll start with Sam Abel, which uh, he was my second uh, workshop guy. And um, I'm very happy that he's being inducted this year. And uh, we have six, Lifetime, I think there's what Eve Arnold is the one that has passed. And then we have a Lifetime Achievement Award. And a lot of people haven't heard about IPHF. It's been around for 59 years. I know this because it was the same year that I was born. Um, and it's had several iterations. So it started out in California. Um, Actually, it might have been Chicago before California, but it was part of the Brooks Institute. And I won't go into all the history. It's all on the website, so I won't bore you with that. But from California, it moved to Oklahoma City, and then it was there for several years. And now it's ended up in, in St. Louis. And in St. Louis, we had a brick and mortar, which with COVID, of course, you know, uh, took that out. And we are a nonprofit organization. So we are solely based on donations and sponsorships. And what's really important for us um, is to honor these incredible photographers, scientists, people that contribute, that spend their life's work um, in this medium, championing this medium. So uh, there's a lot of, that goes into it. I mean, we have a warehouse full of um, inductees works. We have um, exhibitions that can travel. So we're looking for different types of programming opportunities. We're looking for workshops. We're looking for lectures. We're looking for um, educational programs. We're looking for people to be on different committees. We have uh, educational committee, the induction committee, um, several um, committees also that need uh, volunteers and committee members. So um, there's a, many, many ways that you can become involved. We have a form online that I was saying before where you can nominate a person that you think has been a great advocate of photography and you can nominate them we have an induction annually, um, and I will start the, the nominations and voting process maybe within the next couple of weeks. So there will be uh, an ask out there for everybody to start nominating folks that you know, and then the um, voting process will commence. And the way that works is there's a list, there's a, a group of nominees, and we have a committee 
and it is a blind vote. So we don't know who's voting for whom. And then we tally it up and, and that's how they're selected. And uh, this year, like I said, there's six and then uh, one lifetime achievement. So what I'm going through here, are these already in? Yeah, so there's, this is, uh, there's some that are, will be in, like Anne is going to be uh, this year. So this is mm -hmm. um, past and the ones that will be inducted this year. Okay. So if you go to the page uh, for this year's, it's, let's see, so. Where, where you click on, yeah, so if you click on the um, this Hall of Fame. Click on the gala. Excuse me, this is Mark Braun. 2024. Oh, there you go. All right. So if you scroll down, oh, there you go. There's yeah, Eve. You run through the. Right. So here they are all together. There you go. It's quite a list. Yeah, it's an it's an impressive um, <clears throat> group. And the thing is that, you know, I'm not going to lie. We're in this year will be our make it or break it year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with with COVID and with the lack of corporate giving, um, the dynamics for nonprofits has really changed. So we are at the mercy of donors and people that love photography. Um, and I've asked several of my friends, which have said yes, um, for prints for the auction, because uh, we do have an auction at the gala. And you may take out a ad in the program if you wanna congratulate one of our inductees. We do have different levels of sponsorship. So there's a different different ways that you could support. If you uh, have like a auction item that you would like to donate, we have a safari that um, will be auctioned off this year. Um, so there's several different ways of, of getting involved. <clears throat> yeah, we also have, put... sorry, uh, we also have competitions. In the chat. Yeah, we also have competitions. We do four competitions a year. Um, and we do give craft prizes. So the the winning competition is a thousand, and then the second uh, first place is uh, five hundred, and then goes two fifty and a hundred, mm -hmm. and that helps us, of course, get funded. Um, one of the um, jurors for our last competition is on on this call, Rafa, and he's with the AMA Museum, and there is a gallery, um, photography gallery that is. Um, partnered with this AMA museum in DC. I met them at Photo Fest. Um, I had a fabulous time with them. They've actually exhibited two of my bodies of work, uh, this past exhibition that they had, not the current one, but the past one. And so this, this photo competition is open till October. So there's an opportunity for people to, to uh, submit their their uh, images for that competition. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeff is asking, how does one take out an ad? There's a form on the website. Um, so you could just go ahead and it's just plug in. And yeah, our website is brand new. So take a look at it. We've been working really hard on it. We've had two people that, um, transitioned us from the dinosaur ages to <laughs> the current times. So we're excited uh, to have this new website. 
Great. I'm going to open up for some questions from the audience for a little while here. Does anyone have anything they want to ask Elizabeth about her travels or about the International Hall of Fame? You can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. Karen, here you have your hand up. Good to see you. Thank you. Hello, Good to see you. It's been a while. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Arthur. Hello, Jeff. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, Elizabeth, um, of course, I'm following along with all of the work that you and Mark and the, and the other uh, team members are doing for IPHF. But I know that you got involved because you wanted the representation of a woman on the board. Now that you've been with the group for this bit of time and trying to see beyond this make or break year, as you've described it, what do you want to see happen with IPHF? Where, where do you, how do you want to make your mark there in addition to all the good work you've already done? Thank you, Karen. Um, well, I will say that since I joined last month, another woman um, has joined the board. And we also have a person of color, a, a black gentleman that is also on the board. So there is some diversity, but it is the International Photography of Hall of Fame. And that's what I would like to see, is I would like to see a global community. I think um, it's been too, uh, for the past few years, let's say St. Louis focused, and we need to broaden our horizons. It, it, it merits uh, the ability to recognize people internationally that are doing incredible work. Um, and secondly, and more importantly, maybe is, I would love to see a sense of community. You know, the universe blessed me with people like Arthur, like Sam, like you, like Elizabeth Opalenik, um, that have just peppered me with light on my journey. And I feel that whilst photography is a very solitary endeavor, um, there's this sense of community that I, I would love to see come together. I was just in, I don't know where I was. I was maybe Estonia where I saw <laughs> an exhibition and I thought, wow, look at all these photographers that have come together. And it was a uh, photographiska in, in Tallinn actually that had Sig Harvey and some other photographers. And I thought to myself, you know, more of this needs to happen where there's a collaboration of like-minded photographers that can put several bodies of work together and, and do an exhibition. And it doesn't have to be a competition one against the other. I would love to see more communing. Yes, community is really needed. And, and John, I think you know, you did such a great job. I mean, that was my first introduction to you during COVID. I don't even remember how I fell upon it, but um, me being one of the few women that would attend those weekly calls. Uh, yeah. Weekly, we did two a week back then. I have no yeah. idea how I did it. We're doing every two weeks now. I can hardly keep up with this. Right. It was so, two a week back then. But that, I, I think that sense of community was really fantastic mm -hmm. and and it keeps the the mind the agile you know just having those conversations and the dialogue yeah. so for those who are not familiar with that they are all on youtube but there must be 150 or so um interviews on from there so if you look up john cornicello on youtube uh jeff you got your hand up uh yeah i i wanted to ask elizabeth and also uh mark um the uh uh, uh, outreach to Europe, Japan, and the Middle East, and Australia, uh, and can't uh, forget the, um, uh, New Zealand. Um, do, we, do you know anybody out there? I mean, um, uh, Kevin and I know some people down in Australia. Um, there are a couple of people that I think would be good candidates for being um, uh, you know, uh, international delegates, as it were. Um, now, whether or not they want to be on a board or be an advisor, that was the other thing I wanted to ask if you, uh, if you have an advisory board above and beyond just the board of directors. 
No, we don't. But that's, you know, that's something that we should definitely look into. And I think if we you could. Should, you should immediately start it because I think that um, I think there are a lot of good people out there that would be willing to get at least their toe in the water of being involved not to commit being a board member necessarily, but to get together and to give advice because, uh, uh, and, you know, getting more women, uh, getting greater diversity uh, so that there are less old white guys. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> no, I agree a hundred percent. I think, um, you know, that would be ideal for me is to see, you know, there's an incredible talent across Africa. And like you said, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, um, you know, it's limitless really. But uh, I will say, Jeff, that yes, we do need an advisory board, but we need people, we need boots on the ground. We need people to help us uh, yesterday. You know, this is, like I said, this is a pivotal moment. I do think the gala is gonna be, <clears throat> successful this year um we've cut our costs tremendously we're still going to put on a you know a top-notch event and um and i'm happy to say that i'll be there who else is so coming? excited too i'm really i'm we'll finally I'm, get to meet in person I'm, yeah finally i'm very happy to, you know and like i said there will be other photographers there which is going to be great and it is building on that community that is so important well, Elizabeth, I, I'm willing to throw. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, John. So I'm willing to throw my hat in as an advisor anywhere you need help. Okay. Like, thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have questions right now? Mark, yes, can, you take, can you take oh. notes, Mark, on that? Yeah, that's fine. I just real quick, I want to add to what Elizabeth is saying is, um, we've spent pretty much spent the last year rebuilding the board. You know, and as Elizabeth said, we we ended up a couple of years ago with it was an old white guys club, you know, to be honest. Um, and we needed to build a board with people that were actively involved, uh, promoting it outside of St. Louis. And um, <clears throat> we have basically moved for the last year and a half on a very minimal budget because uh, COVID hit us pretty tough and did the changes in in um sponsorship corporate sponsors and stuff like that so you know the idea of a international advisory board is is a, is a dream come true if we can get it put in place on that um we've just been looking for people that can help like elizabeth said do more you kind of boots on the ground help things to build content you know like jeff has been kind enough to work with us doing a couple of programs uh online and and build up some revenue streams that will give us a little more of a base um, but absolutely, Jeff, you know, advisory boards out there, I'm talking to a group right now to, to try to take a, a pretty unique meetup concept that's uh, in, based in St. Louis and trying to get that put out more of on a worldwide basis to encourage people in their own communities to photograph their work and figure out how to get it up on our website to showcase it and stuff like that. Uh, but that, that one's going to take some corporate sponsors, and that's what I'm working on right now. So. You know, yes, uh, and, and to me, to have the, the not just diversity as we talk about in the United States, but, you know, truly diverse cultural input, you know, people from other countries, from their own culture, showing us what they're about, as opposed to Na the Nat Geo concept of sending us there to look for them. So uh, the old concept, I know it's changed, but so anyway, I'll shut up and let Elizabeth get the show back. But that's no, we want to hear from you, too. <laughs> But Elizabeth Opelenik, you had a question or a comment? Uh, yes. Am I okay? So Elizabeth, you talked about them having um having a lot of work from all the people that are already inductees and are part of this. Is that from everybody that when they become inducted, they they donate work to the process, which would make incredible exhibitions uh to travel? Is that what we were speaking about? And I'm happy to be on your advisory board too. But besides that, and I know people in a lot of places that would. So I'm with Jeff on that one. I know a lot of people that can certainly help put it out internationally. And I Thank know you. we'll be getting an email from me tomorrow. <laughs> I know women. Uh, so, um, but is that, oh. is that where the show is? Is something like that, that, is that what you're speaking about? 
And what so, kind of donations do you need for your, because you have a pretty big audience here and happy to donate prints also, but sure. what do you need for the show coming up? So prints, you know, gear, anything really that people want to bid on. And let me just say, so for, for the inductees, right? Ideally, we would love for them <laughs> to donate for the auction. It's not you're not nominated on the basis that you have to give, but we are not for profit. We want to honor these people year after year after year after year. We need to survive somehow. We need to raise funds. So we do ask for a print. You do not have to give a print if you don't want to. Um, we've actually had some folks that have deferred to the following year if they're being inducted, let's say this year or last year. Um, and that's their prerogative. We don't want to make you feel like you're being blackmailed or bribed into having to contribute to it. We'll, we're gonna honor you regardless because that's how the voting went. Yeah. But um, at the same time, we have a gigantic storage place with these traveling exhibitions that are ready to go. We have to pay insurance on these prints. We have to pay rent on the warehouse. All these things cost money. So. Um, we love having the work and yes, you know, these exhibitions will be, we're planning on having an exhibition prior to the gala. Uh, there will be work from previous inductees there and some of the new inductees. Um, so these are ways that we're going to raise funds. And let me just on a side note, say that Elizabeth, um, did me the honor of being our last juror and she knocked it out of the park. Her juror statements were incredible. She had such thoughtful comments on the winners and the just the the winners, the the second places, third places, fourth place. I mean, she commented and and gave thoughtful input as to why she selected these images. And she raised the bar so high that that's the new standard for IPHF. Yeah. And she was gracious enough with pneumonia with COVID to do a pre-interview for me uh, with me for what she was looking for for this competition because what we're also trying to do at IPHF is get away from the generic call for entry and do specific things to help you think outside of the box of what jurors are looking for and I just had a conversation last week with Rafa um Cruz and Fabian Gonzalez from uh, AMA Museum in DC. Those are the current jurors. And so Elizabeth set the bar so high that this is the way we're gonna do it now. And for this competition, this last competition it closes October 3rd, we're gonna have a post competition interview also with the jurors and with the winners of that. So we're doing one more step. And this is just to give those photographers that are starting out the opportunity to see what jurors are looking for, why they selected images, and just to expand our horizon a little bit more. So I want to say thank you, Elizabeth, for doing such an incredible job, giving your time. I know plowing through all those image was, <laughs> images while you were sick, double sick, um, was a great effort. And I thank you very much. Thank you. I want to say I had the trifecta with COVID, pneumonia, and a bronchial infection. But besides that, I want to say that many people, I think, don't understand it's a blind jury. And, and yes, I knew some of the images because I knew some of the people. But what pleased me, and I really have to say that what really touched me is that after the competition and all the winners and things, I've received, I think, letters from and handwritten letters from almost every one of the winners Oh, thanking wow. me, then explaining, just s saying how those things meant something to them. And to the person, almost every one of those was like in a stage of their career thinking about giving up. Yeah. You know, just it's such a difficult time right now. And there are so many competitions, you know, we were flooded. But it was, I was really touched that those people then took the time to actually write me letters or send me an email saying something. It was very, it was very nice. So I think it was a well-rounded ending to that amount of time spent. And, and I, I agree. And I think I think that's why we're trying to set ourselves apart. And of course we do competitions because we need the money. 
because we're a nonprofit, but we want to give back. And that's why we're doing the pre-interviews. We're doing the post interviews. We're giving you money if you win. You know, we're putting you on the website with your images as winners of the competition. And even if you didn't win, Elizabeth picked 35 to 40 images of this last competition and they are on the website. So we're trying again to create this sense of community and give people tools. And I will say that I've been that photographer that I think I want to give up every other week. And then there's a little something that hits me in the head and that says, nope, keep going. You're still having fun. So just keep going. So I am one of those people that have those shadows of doubt come through me all the time. Well, I'm happy to be one of those 35 or 40 extra people that are on the website in that competition. Um, I wanted to go back to you. Talk about these traveling shows. How do those work? Where do they go to? Where can people see some of these shows? Or how does someone bring a traveling show into to be seen? So um, all you have to do is go. We have, I think, five that are created and ready. We're in, in mm-hmm. conversations right now with a gallery in Barcelona. And uh, we're working out the logistics of you know insurance travel and all that kind of stuff but uh if they're interested in any of the ones that we have available for travel all they have to do is reach out to um steven which is our our one one guy that handles everything (laughs) under the sun um he is what holds uh iphf together right now and Mm -hmm. all you have to do is send an email and we'll be happy to talk about those John, there's a list on the website that has all the ones that are when when I say when we say created that have been shown together, created and or framed and ready mm-hmm. to go. Uh, the Barcelona program they actually requested the show of uh, Longard's work, which mm-hmm. is not uh, what was not part of our quote traveling package, but we're working with them to get it set up to ship it out to them um, if they if they're they're proposing it for next year, so. You know, it's just a matter of um, uh, take a look at what's out there. It's they're pretty well detailed on the website, the ones that are ready to ship. OK, oh, Great. Yeah, oh. just, there might be other people asking that same thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'd am i be asking the same thing at the art center where I'm an artist in residence, as Jeff knows, uh, we've got two galleries, not to mention a third one, which has just been opened up. So. Uh, they haven't done anything photography wise, and it would be great to be able to introduce something there. So. I will be in touch in the next week or so about that as I find out a little more on my end on how uh, we have dates available, but that'd be great to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would be wonderful. And those are the kind of opportunities that we're looking for. I mean, uh-huh. we want to keep IPHF going on, you know, beyond my lifetime, the next 59 years plus. Um, well, that, again, yeah, that brings up my next question. How are you reaching out to the youth? How we get young well, photographers involved? Well, that is the other component, right? So how do we now, especially now that film and Polaroids and everything, this, my daughter is photographing with film and Polaroid. I gave up my film years ago. It's, it's unbelievable. I know, I know. Our our local camera had a film night party and there was just like a hundred people there. Yeah, it's incredible. So I think we were, we're involved with Webster University out of St. Louis. And those are programs um, that we're looking to develop is how do we involve uh, the youth to to Mm -hmm. really fall in love with with photography. Um, So we're looking at different kinds of programming also. I I did two lectures uh, about five months ago with a photography school in Florida where they presented work, we discussed their work. So, there's different opportunities where, you know, we're happy to collaborate with with yeah. school programming okay. and things like that. Out here in Seattle, we have Photo Center Northwest, which has a range of ages. And there's also a group called Youth in Focus out here you should probably hook up with. So I'll get you Send that Send me an email tomorrow, John. What's that? Send me an email tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Or today, your time, but. Yeah, yeah, it's only, what, noon here. That's right. John, can I make a quick comment? Of course. Um, back to Elizabeth's question about the inductees. Um, you know, it's a, one of the um, assets that we have and have not really worked with uh, is all are all of the living inductees. And when I say assets, you know, part one of our goals would be to have them as a community 
you know, many of them that have come in to, to be uh, receive their awards were just tickled pink to meet each other. Because like Elizabeth said, photography is pretty much a solo act in most cases. And a lot of these great people, you know, knew of each other, but never met. And, uh, you know, it'd be ideal from my perspective for us to implement a, a you know, a, basically a hall, a hall of Fame member advisory board as well to uh, help lead us down the, the path to, to making this truly, you know, it, we, we, we're kind of, we're 60 years old, but we're still an infant, you know, I hate to say it and we need to grow and we need to grow fast. And we have the, you know, we, we, we've got the, the passion to do it at this point. So anyway, enough on that. I'll get, turn it back to you guys. Great. Again, opening up to anyone else in the audience, have questions or comments about what we've been talking about or ideas for the for the group, where they wanted to go. Jim Brasher is yeah. saying, perhaps you can have an advisory board of under 30s. Yes, Elizabeth Opalenik. Okay, so I was just going to say um, to, to Elizabeth or to the group again, this conversation was supposed to be about Elizabeth's work also. So I appreciate spending so much time on the IPHF. Uh, Carmel, the Center for Photographic Arts, I think would be a great place for that because it's so based in the history of photography. So I think if you haven't reached out to Anne and them, we certainly should do that. And is there a way to see at this point um, I loved all the stuff about IPHF, but how about Elizabeth? Where are you going next? And what is your next project, Elizabeth? <laughs> Let, it's, we're also here for you. I yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. But uh, um, after I'm this show trip, your, your website again as yeah. you're talking. After my trip to, um, <laughs> I finished this trip to uh, go back from, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. I head to Scotland and I'll spend another couple weeks there um, photographing Scotland. And not that I want to come out with a body of work from Scotland, but what I want to do is try to reset my mind to photograph differently from the thousands of videos that I've seen of the top sites of Scotland. So how do I make my work different? And the funny thing is with Hokkaido, I didn't know who Michael Kenna was until I think my second or third trip to Hokkaido. And I know that's shameful, but um, I saw one of his exhibitions in Tokyo. I think it was like the second time. And I saw so many of my images that were his. <laughs> um, so I think as a photographer, many times people will take workshops and say, I, I don't know if they do it consciously or subconsciously, but they try to emulate the person that's leading the workshop. Um, and I try to do the opposite. I wanna create my work inspired by that person. Um, so I'm looking forward to Scotland. I'm a little apprehensive because I don't know what I'm gonna find. Uh, it's, you know, there's, it's a totally different, and new territory for me. So, um, and Elizabeth, I don't know if you heard or if you were on, but I did receive a little note from Daylight Books. So I'm in conversation with them and hopefully August, 2025, uh, there will be a book on my Hokkaido work. So when I get back from Scotland, uh, <laughs> I will be doing, uh, handmade books, special edition handmade books for, from uh, my work on Japan. And then, of course, um, just doing everything that it involves to put a book together. And I know I'll be ringing on Karen and Arthur's and your doorbell, Elizabeth, for thoughts and advice on how to accomplish that. And Jeff has his hand raised. You're muted, Jeff. Yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to working on a laptop instead of a dual screen. Um, yes. So, uh, Elizabeth, um, I had not really seen a lot of your work before, and I think it's very kind of serene and sensitive. Uh, I'm happy to see it, and, and it's interesting that you do mix black and white. Um, but I was going to ask whether or not uh, you are actively creating folios of uh, bodies of work um, and uh, 
uh, I haven't seen you in the uh, show submission of late. Do you submit to uh, shows? I, I have not as of late. Um, uh, one, just because I, I, there's so much out there that I don't know what's legit, what's not, what's gonna, you know, I, I look for certain jurors that I want to present myself in front of. And then truthfully, I, it's just time. And uh, this year has been a crazy travel year. I didn't want to be in the US this year for different reasons. But, um, you know, come the end of this trip, I will be homebound for a while. So I will be submitting some work. I think also I, my mind, as you can see from my website, I love to photograph everything. Uh, so I do little buckets in Lightroom where I, um, you know, put different categories uh, together and and I will have to update my website. And, uh, and then I think of certain projects that I wanna develop. So, um, Yes, I do submit. I haven't lately. And uh, I create little uh -huh. pockets so that I keep my uh, project list going. So you have ongoing projects that you're adding to as you, um, uh, th that's one of the things that I found is very beneficial. And I gotta congratulate Arthur and the workshop that I took from Sam Abel, although, it's like every time I look through the viewfinder, it's like compose and weight and micro composition. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, you know, Arthur's workshop, it was fun um, uh, shooting with him. The, the thing I was going to say is that that uh, it's been my experience that some of my best photographic uh, experiences have not been solo shooting. It's been shooting with a buddy or a small group. Um, and that's one of the things that I really like about doing particularly these small workshops where um, you can get together with a, a few like-minded people and, and uh, shoot together because I, I enjoy that. Yeah, and I do. I think, you know, you're you're right about that. I think uh, when I was in California with Karen and that's where I met Elizabeth and and Elizabeth and I since then have traveled together and photographed together. Um, but every time I'm with Karen, uh, you know, this little light bulb goes off and she may not be next to me, but, uh, it's, I don't know, there's a source of inspiration or energy or connectivity or whatever you want to call it that comes about where it's hit on um, your shoulders, <laughs> right? Well, Arthur's been in my ear since 2010. I mean, if, if. I don't think he'll ever leave. I mean, he's just, you know, <laughs> always there. He's like, e -e -e -e. Um, which I love. And I'm very grateful because, you know, I, uh, I've told you, Jeff, I don't know Photoshop. I know how to do two things. Um, and I do very little in Lightroom, as you can see from my photographs that these are, um, uh, so it, it's one of those tools that I can, I, really I can help you out with that Elizabeth <laughs> I know I know that's why I'm saying those are one of the, the one of the things that I have to really address is is uh my post work but I am grateful to Arthur that I um don't have to spend much time behind the computer I like being outside and I and I love nature and I when I started I started with travel photography and I really love people and interact, interacting with them and stopping and having a conversation and taking a photograph but as I get older I find that I need peace so I find myself along the shoreline or in the woods um, and usually uh, that's where my happy place is and if you look at this photograph of this gorilla she's flicking me off I see that it's the first <laughs> thing I noticed <laughs> yeah. you <a> word? she is <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, I just want to say one thing, because I'm going to have to go here in a minute. First of all, I want to thank you guys for putting this together. Elizabeth, two things. One, that condition that you're suffering with is called arthritis, and it'll be with you forever, I hope. Secondly, I'm reminded of a great ad slogan from the 60s when I look at your work, and that is, you've come a long way, baby. <laughs> it's 
like remarkable to me to see the work that people do in a short week workshop, four or five days, where they start on day one and where they end up on the last day. And what you've done since 2010, if that's when it was, I don't even remember, is, is fantastic. And all these bodies of work, the personal work that you've done, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to look at. The other thing is what you're doing with the Hall of Fame is fantastic. And I hope that you continue to keep doing both. Photography, we need people like you to Thank be doing you. what you're doing and making the image that you're making. So I'm going to have to bow out, but to all of you, nice seeing you here and I uh, hope to get to see you again in person soon. Thanks, Elizabeth, Art. Thank you, Art. Thank you. I love you. Love you too. Take care, everybody. Okay. Take care. Yeah, so the workshop you mentioned with Elizabeth and um, Karen, Jeff and I did that same workshop but a week or so after you, so we didn't get to meet each other. But that was a fun workshop, getting to work side by side with other photographers and, and traveling. What was around. That, uh, you know, I in that ideas. workshop that Karen did, I met so many creatives again that I wasn't familiar with and and just be inspired by their work. Um, it's It's those uh workshops are um that i would love to see more of right where these photographers and it's difficult for you know i know everybody has to make a living but um if there was more of that community where people were willing to give their time freely and just you know room just talk about stuff you know, like we do on the Zoom calls, um, just to spark creativity and keep motivation going and and things like that, I think is really, really important. So I want to go back to your time as a gallery owner. Was that mm -hmm. before or after you started photography? So that was way after. I had retired from, from my job at American Airlines and... Mm -hmm. um, I was bored and my husband had retired a few years after that and he was bored and we're like, okay, now what do we do? <laughs> and we decided to buy every book on how to run a non-for-profit and how to run an art gallery. And so it was a non-profit art gallery. And what we did is it was for young and emerging talent and young, not necessarily in age, but in exposure. So we went, uh, you know, I did like an open call where people would come and I did two days of uh, seeing people, their portfolios, reviewing them. And, um, and then we would teach them, you know, how to create a body of work, how to write a bio, talk about your work. I mean, from soup, soup to nuts on, on, on how to do this. And the thing is that for me as a kid, uh, you know, I grew up a poor, let's say a poor white child on the other side of the tracks, right? And um, photography really say, it, it was art, really. I had a four hours art class. I had an honors humanities class and one other class. And that was my last couple years in high school. And it was art that really kept my rear from getting in trouble. Um, and so I used to do pencils and charcoals and I loved getting my hands dirty and creating images as an artist. But I found as my mind became more cluttered, I really couldn't paint anymore. And that's how I transitioned to photography. And, and um, so I would say from, you know, end of high school, when I picked up a camera seriously to fast forward to today, but um, there's always been a love of art. There was a great gallery in Florida in Coconut Grove. I bought my first art piece on layaway. Um, I couldn't afford it. It was a Gorman. He's a Southwest, um, artist. He's passed several years ago, but did an incredible Southwest, uh, series of, of women in particular. And the gallery allowed me to pay for it on layaway. It still is one of my favorite pieces. It's on the mantle of my home in Colorado. 
Um, and that's where my love of art began really is, you know, as a student and then as a collector. And then as a gallerist, I gave the same opportunity to people, um, especially young people. I, we always price things below market value uh, so that people could have access to great art. There's a gentleman by the name of Fervis Young. He's passed. He was a prolific artist, homeless guy from Miami over town, black, diabetic. Um, and he's been collected in over 70 museums across the world. And we had Purvis below market value and people could put those pieces on layaway. So I think it's important to give people access to art and also engage the community in the arts. Did you, were you saying something, Kevin? No, I said that was just very cool. Sorry about that. I think I was on mute. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I'm just looking through the comments to see if there's anything yeah, else that's up. So I'm, I'm the concert's going to start. Yes, concert's going to start in a few moments, so I'm going to scoot out. Becky's saving me a seat, um, and it's it's Baroque and classical music. Wow. But, um, uh, uh, and actually, um, uh, uh, well, there are, I'm going to be meeting up with an Italian photographer tomorrow. I'll mention the uh, International uh, Photography Hall of Fame, uh, but it'd be interesting to get a, uh, uh, you know, by continent, at least one advisor per continent, uh, except for not Antarctica. Well, we could have an Antarctic, but um, <laughs> anyway, I wanted to thank you and and uh, 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 also Kevin and Holger and John. Uh, Holger was the one that kind of rebooted this whole thing and yeah. and uh, Kevin decided to go ahead and uh, host it off of uh, uh, the uh, uh, photo pixel. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> not photo pxl it's photo pixel kevin Get okay jeff photo. got it <laughs> as always <laughs> so anyway thank you very much okay. and, and uh, uh also for you guys didn't catch it at the um, end of september the date i think is nailed but i'll just say at the end of september i'm going to be doing a uh, a talk about kind of my life and photography and then in the beginning of december i'm going to be doing a workshop that um, uh, uh, Elizabeth, you should be there because yes. that helps you deal with uh, workflow. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I want to help and support. Also, I got to tell you, when I started as a nominator, which was, boy, that was a lot of work because I thought, well, you know, I got to do the work and figure out who's already in there and then figure out who the hell should be in there. And I couldn't believe, couldn't believe that Sam Abel and, and, um, Paul Campanegro weren't in there. I, both of those were my nominees, uh, although I'm sure other people nominated them too. Uh, but yeah, if you're going to do the um, nomination process again, I've got some more people uh, and also maybe some international people. That's so. great. And I appreciate you being on the call. It was a very pleasant surprise. And I, we will be doing the nomination again. So, um, you know, it's on the website. You could start putting people there so I could add them to the list. So they'll be there for when we vote. And again, uh, the nomination is uh, fairly straightforward for those folks that missed it earlier. There is a form online on the IPHF website. I'm sure all of us know several photographers that have not made it into the induction that deserve to be there. So we're asking for everybody to participate. It is you know, a little bit of information is required. You can't just type a name. You have to give the reason why and and a little bit more depth to the to the person uh, for the you know as to why they're being nominated. But I think it's well worth the effort, and um, I'm I'm excited about next year's results. I'm I can't wait for the voting process to begin. Very um, cool. Well, Jeff, that is don't get don't, oh, Jeff don't. run and catch up with Becky before you get in trouble. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, enjoy your concert. And uh, I'll see you in a month, and uh, I'll talk to you when you get back, man. Have fun out there. Jim, Jim you, good. Jim's got his hand up. Yes. Um, I'm interested in Elizabeth's perspective on getting work out there, that thing we're all supposed to be doing. 
as a former, as a person who ran in Gallup with all of those challenges, it still seems to be the conventional wisdom that we should be trying to get our work into galleries. But also it's the conventional wisdom that we should not worry about galleries because that's almost impossible these days. And we should all be doing books because there aren't enough photo books out there. What are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are, <laughs> you know, it's a double-edged sword, right? So I've always been apprehensive of, you know, about showing my work. I would say I'm an introvert, even though many people think I'm not, but um, it is very intimidating for me to put myself out there for whatever reason. Um, I'm sure there are many <laughs> require a lot of psychology, but I would say that one, keep true to yourself, do projects that you love. I think all my projects that I've done thus far I'm passionate for one reason or another. So I think, you know, try not to follow the norm of what everybody's doing. Um, stick to what you're passionate about. I was encouraged by Karen Facilis to do Photo Fest. Um, it was my first time. And uh, the first week was pretty scary because I saw a lot of people in the bathrooms crying, uh, people walking away disillusioned. Um, I got my ass handed to me a couple of times, but I would say that overall, it was a great experience. Uh, I met Rafa and, and Fabian there, um, met folks from the Guardian that would like to publish an article as soon as I find a gallery that wants to exhibit uh, my Hokkaido work. So I made a lot of great connections. What I will say is that you need to have a body of work that is completed or nearly completed or gallery that's presentable to a gallery. I wouldn't go with a thought. So it has to be a body of work that is almost finished or pretty well defined and then present it in a professional way that it's easy for them to envision. Um, and then as far as submissions and getting work out there, I would say choose wisely you know, do the research on jurors that you want to be in front of. And um, you'll find affinities with certain galleries that um, take your work more, I guess that you're in sync with them better than other galleries. So, <laughs> uh, you know, just don't shoot randomly. And as far as the book, uh, when I went to, you know, this was the classic question for me at PhotoFest. Like I shoot everything. I have four very different projects. Uh, I did a, a project with my grandmother's poetry. I did a project with my husband where he did the writing and I did the photographing of small towns in Colorado, which are 300 or less in population. So, uh, and then I did my Hokkaido work and there was one other body of work that I presented. They're all very different. And the question was from many of these folks, well, if you had to pick one, which one would it be? Well, we're not monolithic, we're multifaceted beings. So why would I have to pick one? And even though a lot of people found it as a negative, you know, they would say, oh, just put everything else away and just show this one body. The next day I had some person that was totally in love with other bodies of work. So you never know what you're gonna get. Um, so that's why I say, you know, find your what you're passionate about, photograph that and present your work. And it doesn't matter if you're shot down, just keep going. Um, and you'll find your fit. Uh, you know, I <laughs> again, the universe has, has blessed me with finding people that, that, that feel my work. And that's what I would say is that I find that people that are resonating with my work is because they feel the the depth that I feel for my work. Thank I you hope for that, that answered that. Well, it, 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 yes or no. It was wonderful advice. I think that's very important advice. And thank you for that. My question was actually more theoretical and more sort of as photography as a field moves forward. You know, when, when I would speak to, to, to gallery owners, in, in the cell area, 
we lost both of our big name photography galleries years ago. And so now usually photography will pop up. The Photo Center Northwest does a lot to, to make their walls available. But honestly, there's more photography on coffee shop walls than in the walls of galleries in Seattle. And so I have this abiding affection for photography as an art form. And I want to see it healthy and growing and stuff. And I'm concerned that, you know, are there galleries elsewhere that are still doing a, a still enthusiastic about photography? But it seems like books are kind of where the future of photography is going to be for a while. And as someone who has the experience that you do, I was curious what your what do you see photography being healthy in five years, in ten years? Well, I think I think that's part of the you know part of the problem, especially with AI now. I think it's going to face its challenges moving forward. But I do think that you know we have to support more institutions that do photography and carry the photographers' work. And there's, I mean, there's you know the Fotografiska in New York. I'm not sure why it closed. If it was because it's looking for a different location. But they do have Berlin, they have Tallinn, they have New York. Um, and there's definitely institutions and galleries that are just photocentric. So, but I, I, as a photographer, buy other photographers' work. I buy, I have so much art that I have a garage that's air conditioned, um, full of work. Sorry, my light just went out. So, uh, I think it's important for each person that, that loves photography like yourself to support our, you know, individuals and institutions. I mean, when I go to a place like I did with the uh, photographic in Tallinn, I tweeted, I tagged them, I, you know, I show the world the images that are on the wall, talked about the exhibitions that are there, um, things like that. I think if we don't keep, you know, the dialogue going then we'll die. And I think art, you know, photography has always been the stepchild of the art world. So that's why, that's why I became involved with IPHF also, because it's important to carry this legacy on. And, and that's why, you know, we're asking people to become involved and help us carry this institution forward because photography storytelling, it's documentation. It's the, it's the teller of time, you know, it's, there's things that won't change. It's photography that's been printed, not sitting on a hard drive and the written word. So books and photographs are the storytellers. We've gone from floppy disk, hard drives, CDs, DVDs, all that technology is out the window. Now we're, you know, I don't even know what we're on now and what will move forward. But if you print a print or if you have something written, those are the storytellers and those will last forever. Cool. Anybody um, else have anything they'd like to contribute? Yeah, I think we're. we're no, doing I think it? we're good. Okay, good. Well, Elizabeth, first off, I want to say thank you for being part of our afternoon here, especially with the time difference. Mark, <laughs> also, thanks for joining us. Um, I think you've opened our eyes to this. Um, I'd like to have a separate dialogue with you sometime in the, the next month or so about how Photo PXL can step in and, and try to help with the audience that we have and raise uh, awareness on a larger scale. So uh, we'll, we'll have to have that discussion sometime. I, I look forward to the conversations and truly any kind of suggestions, ideas, thoughts, I mean, good, bad, ugly, any criticisms, <laughs> Send them my way. I mean, I'm a big girl. I can handle everything. Uh, you know, we want to know the good, bad, and ugly and what 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 our negatives are. If you see something negative on the website or something that we should be doing differently or uh, how you th what direction you think we should be going. I mean, these are this is input that we desperately need. We need collaboration. So I look forward to speaking with you, Kevin, and I will follow up with Elizabeth and with Jeff and... Right. Um, and with John about, you know, how to continue this conversation to keep IPHF in the forefront and get our word, you know, get our name out there and, and have it, um, you know, roll off people's tongues without a question mark. 
Excellent. I think it's time that we, we figure out a way to keep photography alive. Um, so much is changing uh, with AI coming in on so many other different avenues uh, that we still have to remember what the basis of photography is all about and why we enjoy it so much. Um, you know, with a 54 year career in photography, I've been very blessed in, in so many ways with what I've done. And that's why I do as much as I can uh, to give back to it with what I do. But uh, doing stuff with organizations like yours and a few others and, you know, people like Brooks Jensen, who has a, a serious passion about uh, photography. There's some really great people that if we can just bring all the pieces and parts together, I think can strengthen it for everybody all along. So. Yeah, that would uh, be that would be you know that's the ideal right that's yeah. the, that would be the 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 end goal is just to bring this community together where we could just feed off of each other provide uh you know just everything in general and just have one community where we could say hey you know what kevin knows this john knows that um well, collectively and, there's a lot of knowledge out there and um i think that's what needs to be brought together but more than knowledge, the passion that you know, allows us to do the art that we do. So um, we'll right. definitely have more talk about it. Maybe we can have you back on. We can do a, a deeper dive into all this and where things are going and um, you know how we keep everything alive. Because uh, these days, as you said, since COVID, you've had a hard time you know, with you know, the, the financial side of things. And that's, that goes across the board for sites like myself that used to have advertising that you know I, and I refuse to put google ads up uh you know we have to support ourselves with subscri subscriptions and contributions um and uh, it's just a different time you know um well i think you know we we offer sites like myself and others offer uh the industry a good avenue to uh, bring product awareness out uh, a lot of the young people in these uh, corporate marketing things think that, you know, you know, I'll get some influencer from Instagram talking to people that don't have the income to do anything with. And uh, they're just talking to the wrong audiences and so forth. Right. But, you know, and I, I don't know what they feel about these kind of things. We need to bring the new generation into the same passion that all of us uh, have found in, uh, in our journey through photography. So anyway, Absolutely. lots to talk about. Yes. But, Anyway, thank you for, for being part of this today. I um, appreciate you taking the time and uh, bringing your knowledge and your beautiful photography. John, thanks for uh, handling the AV section uh, of this today. You did a great job. Thanks also for you know getting photo chats going all the ages, all the way back to the, uh, the pandemic. Um, after having my most recent bout with COVID, uh, I have lots of memories of that, unfortunately, not all. Pleasant seeing how we lost a family member and uh, nearly, you know, my, my wife was sick, but hey, it's a different COVID these days, thank God. Um, thank God, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. We will stay online for a couple more minutes if anybody uh, just wants to say something that.